Hello everyone, in today's video, I'll show you how to calculate the gravitational field using Gauss law. So consider this as an application of Gauss law. So the object we'll be considering is a spherically symmetric body, okay, and it has a mass capital M. And we need to calculate the gravitational field, okay, at a, dis uh, at a point which is outside the body. So if this body this is center, okay, has a radius of capital R, we'll calculate the field at, say, any point, this point, okay, this is at a distance, let us say, small r away from it, okay, so, small r greater than r, this means that the point which we are considering is outside the body, so how do we go about doing this? Let me first construct an imaginary surface, okay, and then we'll use Gauss law on that surface. So, see. So, this is our surface, it's not perfectly spherical, but yeah, you get the point, it's a sphere, okay, and it has a radius r. Now, let us consider field at any point, let's say this point. Now, the field, fir first point is that it has to be along the radial direction, okay? You're not commenting on whether it's inward or outward, we'll find that out, but it has to be along this direction, okay? Why? Let's see. Let's just say there is some component right uh, like this now since the this half okay this half and this half are spherically are symmetric there has to be a component like this okay so the component the let's say this horizontal component okay this component these two will exactly cancel each other out so imagine doing it in 3d so you have this point right over here the tip of the pen so it's been attracted equally by this by this part by this part by this part and the, this part okay so their horizontal components or their tangential components let's say will cancel each other out so the net field has to be along the radial direction okay it can be in plus r cap or minus r cap that we'll find out now another important property of uh, this this spherical surface okay and on which the surfaces on which we use the gauss law they are known as gaussian surfaces so on this gaussian surface since this is a sphere okay this point is basically the same as any other point okay the mass distribution about this point remain about any of these points remains the same so the magnitude of the gravitational field at any of these points on this blue surface has to be the same all right so from this we find that the gravitational field g has to be of the form g of r means the magnitude is a function of r okay and r is greater than the radius in the r cap direction okay and now we shall use the gauss law so gauss law says that the surface integral g dot da da is the area element okay so da will be the area magnitude of a small area differential element okay this one and it in points radially outward so r cap equal to minus 4 pi g m internal so as i've shown in the, my previous video the flux the on, uh, only the internal masses contribute to the flux okay now here's the important part since this let me edit this down first so we get left with g of r r cap dot da r cap 
now r cap dot r cap will be just one okay so you will be left with integral g of r da equal to minus 4 pi g uh, 4 pi g m internal so m internal is just the mass of this sphere okay 4 pi g m now since this is constant over this g of r is constant over this surface okay the magnitude is same in this direction in this direction as well we can pull g of r out of our integration okay so g of r integral da equal to minus 4 pi g m now what is this quantity okay this quantity is just the sum of all such small area elements okay so what will we get if we sum all these areas we'll just get the surface area of a sphere having the radius small r so g of r times 4 pi r square is equal to minus 4 pi g m okay 4 pi and 4 pi cancel out we are left with g of r the magnitude of g okay the function of r so this g of r is minus 4 sorry minus 4 g m upon r square okay so finally the field itself the vector quantity okay is g minus g m upon r square in the r cap direction for r greater than the radius if you are outside this the spherical body now this is a very important result this means that this spherical body will behave like a point mass at a distance r basically if you are at this point at a distance r away from, away from a center of a spherically symmetric body or at a point mass you won't be able to tell the difference by measuring the gravitational field they will be the same another imp uh, interesting fact is that we haven't uh, said anything about the nature of this spherical body okay it can either be a solid sphere or it can be a hollow sphere as long as we are outside the sphere it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if it's a solid sphere it doesn't matter if it's a hollow sphere all of them will behave just like a point mass as long as you are outside the sphere outside the sphere and this statement is the first statement of newton's shell theorem in the next video we'll show the second statement of newton's shell theorem that concerns with the field inside a hollow body so till then stay tuned and thanks for watching